Hello and welcome to Backstage with Gig Performer. My name is Brett Pontecorvo, and today we are diving into all things scriptlets. So, um, as you are popping in, do say hello. Let us know that you are here. Mark, welcome. So happy uh, to see you. And by the way, if you're watching this stream later, feel free to also let us know that you are checking in. Um, right now, it seems like we've got a special guest, uh, previous backstage episode, Michelle Kaijas. I'm still working on that, Michelle, but um, good afternoon. Welcome. So happy to see you here. A few bits of uh, good news, things coming up soon uh, that you guys can check out. Next week, we actually have a special guest coming on, uh, Mike Rosenstark. Um, and Mike is a music maker and is doing some really interesting things. Uh, we do have some articles or one article, a gig performer in action article, uh, all about him in the forums. Um, he's creating electronic music. And in order to fully understand exactly what he's doing, you just got to check it out. But he's going to come and show us his thought process as well as his gig performer setup. Um, he's a former user of basically every other software. <laughs> and so uh, I think he has a deep appreciation for the way that gig performer works and also what it's allowing him to do uh, in his live set. So very excited to have him on. Another former backstage guest. Welcome. So happy to have you here. Welcome, Dave. Eric coming on, saying hello. So happy. And of course, uh, hello to Mello from South Africa. We are so happy to have you here. So uh, we're going to talk about scriptlets today. And scriptlets are really cool. Um, Nemanja, who if you don't know him yet, you haven't joined any of our community things. So go check out our community stuff. But mention that scriptlets, I think, sometimes are overlooked and overused. So today we're going to talk about what they are, where you can find them, and how you can make uh, the best use of them. So according to the Gig Performer user manual, <laughs> the Scriptlet plugin allows you to create your own MIDI processor plugins. This plugin provides you a single MIDI input pin and a single MIDI output pin. So translating this loosely into speak for somebody who's completely unfamiliar with what a Scriptlet does is it is a very close approximation of building your own plugin using GP Script. Now, before all of the non-programmers disappear, um, GP Script actually allows you, um, sorry, Scriptlets allow you as a non-programmer to take advantage of a lot of GP Script functions without actually needing to know anything about programming. So if you're wanting some extra functionality, this is where you can find it. Um, I want to show you um, what we have going on here because on the Gig Performer forums, there is actually a whole uh, database article dedicated to where you can find them. And you can kind of see a brief overview. So the link for that actually is in the chat right now. Um, and when you take a look at it, you'll see there are some extra functions that you don't have available regularly within Gig Performer that we have created uh, with GP Script that you can access new things. So for example, if you look at this first one here, it says auto move with timer allows for automated fader movement. Okay, cool. So we're gonna check out that one, I believe. Um, another one that gets used often, I think this is one of the most useful um, ones certainly that I've seen is this auto sustain. And we're gonna talk about that as well today. And what that does is it allows you to play a note and have it hold out until you release it. Um, which is really useful if you have to play long passages of held notes, but also cover other parts. Uh, and if you're a keyboard player, then you have had to do this before, I assume. Um, hey, if you're watching right now and you have used scriptlets uh, before, let me know in the comments. And if you're watching right now and you built some of these scriptlets, because I think that might be the case, um, let us know as well if, uh, if you're the creator of some of these, because I think we may, we may have some creators um, in the chat with us as we speak. Um, one other place that you can find scriptlets is in our resources on the website, uh, this gig and rack space files. This is a part of the forum, and this is a curated list of all of the available um, pre-downloadable rack spaces. And some of these are scriptlets, and they kind of look like this. We're gonna look at a bunch of them, so you'll see it. But um, this is not just for scriptlets. This can be also for 
you know, cool rack spaces that look awesome or that do a really specific job. Um, but this is also a resource that I think is worthwhile uh, to take a look at, um, especially if you're kind of trying to get familiar with Gig Performer or familiar with, um, you know, what's available to you in scriptlets. So I'm going to pop over here to Gig Performer and we're going to have a look at some things, scriptlets. So on the screen right now, I have Gig Performer, and this is just uh, you know a set of a bunch of scriptlets. Um, we actually have David wrote in here. It's not on the list, though it is on the forum. I created a scriptlet to allow you to change Leslie's speeds between fast and slow using a pitch bend lever. Thanks so much for saying that, Dave. This is a, a great example of exactly why scriptlets can be so helpful. When you need to do something, you can't naturally do it. You can create a solution using scriptlets. Um, so something like that, this is what scriptlets were built for. So um, for those of you who've been watching, you probably know that I teach a lot of piano lessons. It's one of the things that I do um, for work. And I actually do everything, all of the piano lessons on the internet. Um, so during the Christmas season, I wanted to have a way to create bell sounds during my lessons. But I had this issue. I'm going to show you the issue and also how uh, Scriptlet solved this problem. So um, I'm using Reason Rack to host um, this particular sound, which I guess is bypassed. So let's unbypass that. There we go. And I have it in Kong, and this is just a you know a drum sampler, right? Um, but there are other sounds here that are not super Christmassy, and I didn't want to trigger those sounds. I wanted to only trigger this sound. And so I was looking for a way to transform my incoming MIDI messages so that no matter what key I hit, this is what would be triggered. And I thought, hey, this is a great time for me to check out um, what a scriptlet does. So here's my scriptlet, and you can tell that this scriptlet looks just like any other plugin that you would use in gig performer it's you know orange because it's midi and you can double click on it and it's going to open up a window that looks like this so this one has no messages here but we will quickly look at a few that do and if i click that little compose button you will see that there is a script happening inside of this scriptlet now what's kind of special about these is they're inserted in a particular MIDI path. So you'll see I have this kind of crazy thing here because I have a broken key on my keyboard, but I have my MIDI coming in to this scriptlet. And so this script is processing only notes that come through this path, this MIDI path. And so it's allowing you to do, according to David's language, MIDI transformation functions um, in the path of MIDI. So Really simple script, which you don't have to write. Um, I actually think there's one similar to this on the forum. I just didn't think to check before I made it. So I've got a callback, just like with every other script that there is, basically saying, hey, when a node event happens, I want you to send the node event through to the other side, right, to the output of this scriptlet. But I always want you to send this node. And that allowed me to always have sleigh bells. Now I'm going to bypass this. And you'll hear, I should turn off the piano, that um, that it doesn't do what you would want it to do, right? If you're trying to make Christmas bell sounds for your students on Gig Performer, um, you want them to just be Christmas bells. So now, when I hit any key on my keyboard, you will see um, that I'm getting the same note. And I've got this camera here so you guys can see my hand. So no matter what key I'm hitting, I'm getting that same Christmas bell sound. Um, and I think there are probably other use cases for this, but this was my first kind of moment where I thought, okay, I understand scriptlets. They're very useful. They're very interesting. Now, if you are looking to create a scriptlet, which you don't have to, we're going to look at some pre-made ones. If you right mouse click underneath internal plugins, um, under MIDI processing and monitoring, you'll see a scriptlet and that will give you an empty scriptlet and you can double click it, open it up and start writing if you so desire. However, this episode is about not having to script. So let's take a look 
can't really hear the keyboard sounds. I can make those a little bit louder for you, Dave. Um, although I do think it probably won't be that big a deal. I'm going to double check and make sure my microphone is coming in from where I think it is. Check, check, check. I'm going to turn up the mic volume. Check, check. Um, hopefully that will help. So the first one I want to look at today is called auto sustain. Now this is um, available when um, <laughs> we've got a programmer question coming through right now. Why is the note off command not needed to be implemented? Um, the reason for this, as I understand it, is because it is a note event message which combines all of those messages. Um, so the note off is kind of wrapped into um, the MIDI message. Although somebody who um, actually knows scripting really well might be able to speak to this a little bit better. Um, okay. So uh, let's do this, um, auto sustain. So the concept of this scriptlet is what if you need to um, hold out a sound for longer than you physically can? <clears throat> Excuse me. So you need a way that when you hit a key, kind of lasts indefinitely until you hit the next one. Well, this is a great job for a scriptlet. And let's have a look here at what's going on. So here's a really simple path. I've got incoming MIDI. I've got my auto sustain, and then I've got keys of the 70s, which right now is set to um, set to electric piano. Doesn't matter too much, but ooh, double clicked on the wrong screen. When I double click on auto sustain, you'll see this auto uh, this scriptlet rather has uh, some parameters on the front, um, and the thing that's nice about this is these can be mapped to widgets. So when we want to be able to have control over these things, we have the ability to do that from the widgets on the front panel. Now inside here, there's a bunch of stuff happening. And I will tell you that I don't understand most of this. However, you don't need to understand any of it in order to use it. All you need to do is throw it in your MIDI path and check out the front. Again, this one is available uh, to download from the website, and I put the link there in the comments so you can check it out. We've got an on-off button right here, and this decides whether or not the auto sustain should be active or inactive. And then we've got a stop button, and this stop button is what allows um, uh, the note to cut off if you're done using it, right? Um, you guys can let me know if you hear my keyboard sound at all. Um, if not, I can maybe change something a little bit here. But when I hit this button, and let me switch my camera so you can see my hands. I'm hitting it once, and this is continuing to sustain even when I'm not touching the key until I hit the next one. David is shaking his head no, which means you can't hear me. Okay, uh, hold on. Going to hit stop. Check, check, check. Let me test one thing here. Appreciate your patience, friends. Let's see. Okay. Um, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to unshare the screen. Ooh, you guys can now see my keyboard really large. This is the beauty of live stream. So I am going to quickly switch out my audio interface to something different and give Gig Performer a second to reload. Um, okay. Sweet. So I guess I'll keep talking about this auto sustain while it's reloading. But essentially what it's doing is that it's allowing you to lift your hand and still hear that sustained sound, um, which can be something that is useful. David actually created this particular scriptlet for uh, one of his shows where he was doing um, a Pink Floyd tune. And do you, do you want me to, do you want to come on, David? How's it going, David? Good. Uh, uh, I'm eating chicken soup. I've got a bad cold, so yes, I can't right. talk. Um, long, but yeah, this auto sustain was invented for my Pink Floyd um, band, where you have to have the same chord for like you know you do a solo with a saxophone and pit. You want to have just play the chord, go back to playing the solo, change the chord, and go back again, and I'll have to deal with the pedal. And you know, other systems have it. It's, sometimes it's called latching. Yeah, and, and there are different things. Um, on the forum, if anybody is interested, um, I have them. I, I think it's there, but it's not. I'll put it up. 
I made a modified version of that uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, for people who want auto sustain with an automatic stop after some amount of time if you don't actually hit the stop, which might be useful as well. So that's an improved version coming. Absolutely. I didn't um, even know what that note off question was. Um, oh, I think I think it was answered. But you, David, while you're here, in GP Script, there's a concept of a note message. Yes. And that includes all of the MIDI information. Note well, on, you, note wait, off. Wait, 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 wait. Um, are you talking? The, no. Are you talking about a callback? Or are you talking about an actual message? I'm talking about a message. No. So, like, I can show you the context. Maybe that would help. Yeah. Check this out. So in this particular scriptlet, the question was, why does there need to be, why does there need to be nothing explicit sending a note off? Oh, and because, that, because that, okay. Because that callback handles both kinds of messages. Right. So there are separate mess callbacks for a note on event and a note off event. If you need to use them separately or you can just use this, and if you care, you can ask, is this a note on or is it a note off? But in this particular case, um, you just want to, wh whatever comes in, you're just sending it back out again. All you're doing is changing the note number from whatever it was to 60. And if it's a note on, it'll do it. If it's a note off, it'll do it. That's Absolutely. Why. Are you able to hear me when I'm talking right now, David? Yes. Fantastic. Um, that means that my audio is now working. Um, yeah, so the concept of a note message callback is what makes the whole difference. Um, all right, let's see this. Hey, friends, can we hear my keyboard now? Ha, wonderful. Um, David, did you have more thoughts on that before I pop you off? Pop me off. I'm eating my chicken soup. Enjoy, enjoy. Okay, so now with full sound, um, this is what we have going on. I'm going to switch so you can see my hands. Okay. So I hit some keys, sound is sustaining until I hit the next set of keys, next set of keys, next set of keys. Um, so, you know, imagine this with uh, an organ, um, which probably would have been better to demo, but it allows you to have a full uh, sustained sound until you hit the next set of keys. Um, and then there is this stop button here, which I guess allows the note off to pass through, I assume. Um, so it ends the sound in any case. Now, that's kind of the thing I want to draw your attention to about scriptlets in general here, is that because of the nature of having the ability to have these um, faders on, on this scriptlet plugin, you're able to map widgets to them, which means you can interact with the script, um, you know, from a widget, which I think makes it a lot more useful um, overall. So that's a really cool one. Now, something we get a request for often, um, the gig performer doesn't do and, you know, feature requests and all of that, but is to have light up keys. Um, and this is a pre-made um, pre rack space that is available on the gig performer forums. And you'll notice that I now have a gig performer and sons um, rack space. So I'm going to just make sure you guys can hear this piano. Okay. And when I play a note, you'll see. Um, it lights up on the front. So if that's something you're interested in, you can certainly download this. Um, and let's have a look at what's going on in the back. So in this particular instance, the light up keyboard is made up of two separate um, scriptlets. And check this out. Again, don't fully understand, right? But all of these front things are mapped to the widgets on the front. The keys are coming through and they're lighting up. And it's only the things that are in this path. So if I were to disconnect this MIDI in, and run it through here, this would no longer work. So it gives you specific control, um, not only of lighting these keys up, but also of what is lighting the keys up, which I think is really interesting um, and powerful. Okay, um, let's continue to pop down this list. So this is a really 
uh, utilitarian, I would say, scriptlet, but I think it could be extremely valuable if you're dealing with controllers um, and especially if you're dealing with different MIDI uh, channels to just verify what channel things are coming in on. I'm going to show you the wiring for this. Um, pretty intense. But essentially, what this person has done, again, available for people to download on the forums, is he has created a bunch of scriptlets which allow you to tell if you are receiving MIDI from a particular channel. Um, so I'm like, this is probably helpful too if you're working with um, some sort of a, a MPE instrument and you're wanting to see what things are coming in where. Um, and then at the bottom, all nice and neat, there's this MIDI monitor. So if you're looking at all of the spaghetti and you're thinking, well, how is that actually useful? Well, you know, you have this MIDI monitor here, which allows all of these messages to pass through and you could run it straight to a plugin of your choice on the other side. Um, and that would really take a lot of wires and allow you to monitor what channels are coming in. And I think that could be uh, particularly helpful if you're dealing with a lot of different uh, MIDI channels. Now, this next one <laughs> I think is really cool. Um, so I'm going to talk you through this. I think this was made by um, Shamas. If you're still here, Eric, let us know. Um, so the concept of this is what if you don't have enough buttons on your controller, but you still would like to have the ability to control parameters without having to give up a key on your keyboard. So in Gig Performer, you could certainly map a note, say C3, to a parameter, but you would then, well, not anymore, um, but you would lose that key functionality. Um, so this scriptlet, what this does is it allows you to set a combination of keys, which puts you into a special mode that allows you to use a key on your keyboard to... Um, control things. So let me show you how this is set up so far in the back. So we've got MIDI in coming to secret key switches. And then I believe this MIDI monitor was probably there just so uh, the designer was able to see what's going on. But secret key switches has some parameters that you need to set. And actually, um, this is one of those times where you kind of have to look at this. There's some pretty detailed instructions. Um, so if you're interested in this kind of a thing, I do recommend reading them. But this is, as I understand it, what's happening. And I think it will be clear enough for you to get started. You have to choose three unlock notes. And if all of these three notes are played at the same time, you now have the ability to create messages using other keys. So the nice part about these faders is you can use them to set which keys you want in order to enter this magic mode. Now I set this up with D3 here. Um, credits for the scriptlet go out to Davidson. Thank you, Davidson, for creating the scriptlet. Um, so you're going to see when I press these three keys, um, and I'll change this so you can see what I'm doing, this light on the front panel turns on. <laughs> So now we know that we are in a different mode altogether, and my keys have now become controllers. And when I let them go, that turns off. The next thing that we need to look at to understand what's happening here is the edit mode. Because when you move into edit mode, you are going to see that there are some grouped widgets. Um, and these grouped widgets are now going to allow you to control whatever it is you want to control from uh, these uh, secret key switches, I guess we'll call them. So I've already gone in here and inserted a widget um, to control chorus, and I've added it to group A. So I'm going to show you how this ends up working. Let's topple over here, and I'm going to open up keys of the 70s. So here's keys of the 70s. And when I click this widget, the chorus turns on and off. But now I want to be able to do this from my keyboard, right? So I'm going to enter into secret mode and I'm going to hit my key that I've set. And now every time I hit this C, which let's, if I can move this over without 
breaking something here. Every time I hit this C, I'm toggling between the chorus being on and the chorus being off. This is like wild and really interesting. Um, so even if you don't have enough um, buttons and control things on your keyboard or your MIDI controller, using this scriptlet, you can be able to do more than what you have access to button-wise. Now, there's one other thing about this scriptlet. It's a bit of an advanced feature, but I want to at least show the beginning of it um, because I think it's really interesting. So in Gig Performer, there is a thing that we have called the local GP port. And it's just like any other GP port. It's just that if you're not super familiar with how it works, you do a little bit of digging before you start playing with it. But this scriptlet allows you to send these messages into the local GP port. So if you wanted to, you can almost have this show up. Well, I mean, it is what it is. You can have it be sent to the local GP port and you can then wire this block into something else. Now, just to demo what this will end up looking like, I have set up inside of secret key switches. If I scroll down here, I want to, when I hit a particular key, send CC62 into the local GP port. So I am going to unbypass this block here. I'm going to open up the MIDI monitor so we can see it. And if all goes according to plan, now every time I hit that C, I'm toggling <laughs> CC62 through the local GP port, um, which is is nice, right? Because now you have the ability to have Gig Performer sending its own CC messages. And it's not something, oh, uh, Eric says the sound of my keyboard is gone. And that is because it's not creating any sound. It's just, um, it's just sending those CC messages because I'm in MIDI control mode. Um, okay, so this I think is a really useful and interesting... Um, scriptlet but read the directions <laughs> because it it does take a minute um it does take a minute by the way we talk about many of these in our newsletter so if you're not on our newsletter and you want to be updated every week with a new featured rack space and a little bit of a descriptor on how it works um get on the newsletter and we'll we'll share it with you Okay, so by default, Gig Performer has a feature you can turn on. It's not enabled automatically, but it's always in there called MIDI Patch Persist. And what this does is it allows you to have a note you play in one rack space sustain after you move to the next rack space until you lift your hand. Or if you're playing uh, an audio instrument, it's going to give it a, a specified amount of time to die out when you switch to the next rack space. It's one of the ways that it makes switching really smooth um, and easy. However, sometimes you want to have the ability to do this without actually switching rack spaces. Sometimes you want to be able to do this with variations. And that is exactly what this scriptlet does. Um, so I'm going to go over to the edit view, not edit, sorry, wiring view. So you can see what's happening here. Essentially, we have three different MIDI paths. We have MIDI going to an organ, MIDI going to a piano, and MIDI going to a vibraphone. And they are running through, like you may have guessed, plugin persist, which is a scriptlet. Again, knowing nothing about GP script, you are able to use this. And there are faders on the front of this, and these faders allow you to control some of the elements of the script itself. So We've got a couple of different things here. We have enable plugin on, persistence sustain in milliseconds, persistence release in milliseconds. And essentially what this does, the sustain is how long do I hold this note? The release is how long does it take this note to get to zero? Um, auto sleep is kind of a cool feature. Um, and I'm going to show you it because it's a little, I, I've had a hard time describing it with words, but when you see it happen, you'll be like, yep. Um, and then persistence volume state. So let's have a look at how this works. I am going to play the organ. Oh, which you can't hear because of the way that it works. Five and six, 
five and six, and five and six. Eric was right. There we go. So um, we can move through these variations with that same persist that you would get in a rack space. So here's my organ. I'm going to click piano. And when I lift my hand, it goes away. I'm actually going to switch to my piano so you can see what I'm doing. So organ. Now. So we get a really smooth switch. Now, let me see. Let me see if I can show this. So when we toggle over to the panel view, we have this parameter called auto sleep, which I'm like just a little bit tickled by how interesting this concept is. But essentially, this bypasses a plugin when it's not being used after a certain amount of time. Um, so let's toggle back over to organ and make sure that auto sleep is. Yeah. So I'm going to turn it on. So here's the wiring. I'm going to play organ and I'm going to let go. And <laughs> did you see that happen? Okay, I'm going to do it one more time. So this is bypassed right now because I'm not using it. But I'm going to hit the keys. This is going to turn on, create sound. And when I let go, it's going to re-bypass. Check this out. I mean, it's, it's kind of brilliant. So the stuff that we have control over uh, in this particular uh, scenario mostly is happening here. So I'm going to turn this release time up. You couldn't see that um, in, in these two parameters here. I'm going to turn up this release time, um, and we're going to watch what happens. So keep your eyes down here on the bottom half. So there's a bit of a pause there. And if I turn this back down, uh, I guess that, yeah, slides right down. Um, now this one, if I remember correctly, controls how long it takes to go before it starts moving. Let's see if that's right. Yeah. Um, so what is the latency when the sleep turns off and audio on? So I'm going to put my face back on here. Mark, what's wild about this is that you don't know it's happening. I've played with this a good amount. You can't tell that the plugins are going to sleep. Um, so to say there's no latency is probably incorrect, but it is imperceivable. You will not notice it. It just works. It's, it blows my mind in every single way. Download this and check it out. Um, you don't feel it when you play. You really don't. It feels completely instant. Um, and because there's a bit of a delay built into your feature set, um, you know, even if you're playing something where you're hitting keys and then waiting... It's not going to turn off, right, until it's sure that you don't need it anymore. Um, so this is really, uh, yeah, a really cool one. Uh, it kind of tickles me just what's gone into creating this and all that good stuff. So if you're somebody who's trying to switch between sounds um, in, in one rack space, you want things to plug and persist the same way you would be able to in a rack space um, or... Um, you want to be able to have this auto sleep feature. Um, this is a great one to check out. So, um, wouldn't be interesting if it was always active. My Michelle's over there asking great questions. Um, cool. So let's look at the final one. Now, something that happens occasionally for me, um, is I end up teaching, uh, where my wife's family lives in Illinois. And when I do that, I have to teach on a very small keyboard that, in my opinion, sends keyboard sustain pedal messages incorrectly. Now, some, some people will tell me that I'm wrong, but um, this is sort of the use case where this came up and why uh, I endeavored to find it, but I did not write the scriptlet. Um, I don't even know where I found it, actually, but that's okay. So let's suppose that you have uh, a situation where your pedal is sending incorrect sustain to a plugin. Yep, 
Using this invert sustain pedal scriptlet, you can very easily invert uh, what it's sending. So I'll tell you what, I'm gonna put a MIDI monitor in here. Oops. Which by the way, if you haven't tried this before, if you hit command P, you can start typing in what you're looking for and it's going to pull it up for you. And then you can hit enter and that feels really nice. <laughs> it's a really nice workflow. So I'm gonna put a MIDI monitor in this path here. Um, which you can do by holding down shift and clicking. Um, and I'm going to open it so you can see what's happening. So inside this MIDI monitor right now, you will see that I have a button on my keyboard that is sending messages. Um, and that is what it is. Um, but I'll tell you what, you can see here, I've got when I press down, it is sending... Well, I guess because it's already inverted. When I press down, it's sending zero. And when I lift up, it is sending 127. Now, if I bypass this, I'm going to get the exact opposite. So pressing down is 127 and lifting up is zero. So simple, right? But extremely functional. If you find yourself um, in a place where you need to invert your sustain pedal, you can do that really easily using a scriptlet. Um... So that's it. So these are seven scriptlets. By the way, um, somewhere in there, there is a scriptlet that stops MIDI messages that kind of come in bursts. Um, so perhaps that could have solved my messaging uh, issue coming through on the MIDI monitor there. Um, but it was originally designed to stop looping. Um, so perhaps that's worth uh, checking out if you have um, similar things. Okay, so uh, quick review, friends. Um, Scriptlets are like plugins that you can build with GP script in the sense that you're able to transform MIDI messages. I see David making a face. Um, oh, good. <laughs> but uh, so they are your, uh, your, your cr given creative potential in a way that you're able to use it almost as if it was a plugin, which I think is really powerful. Now, there are some places you can go to find those uh, presets. And Nemanja has done an amazing job putting together a list of some of the presets. If you scroll up, it'll also be in the description. You can go to this link and you'll see them. You can download them and use them for yourself. So you don't have to do any coding, but you can have um, these features. Um, yeah, and it can be really powerful. Now, friends, if you are around next Thursday, at the same time, we will have on a special guest, um, Mike, Mike, Mike Rosenstark. Uh, he's, he's got in my head about what his actual first name is. And so now I say it wrong every time. Uh, but Mike's going to come on and he's going to show us some really interesting things that he's doing. And if you haven't already checked it out, we have a gig performer in action article of exactly what he's doing. He's creating music. He's using radio stations to do it. He's looping. He's got, you have to see it. Just have to see it. So make sure you check it out. But we'll be back with him next week at 1130. He's going to show us inside his rig and he's going to share with us a little bit about how he thinks about creating music. And it's pretty cool. Um, so you definitely won't want to miss that. If you guys get value out of these streams, take a moment to hit the like button. That helps gig performer get in front of more faces. Um, and one of the things that we're trying to do is transform um, the way people perform live so that people can actually own the stage. Performing live, you should be able to dedicate all of your mental energy to playing. Uh, and we believe that gig performer is that tool that allows you to have that peace of mind. So if you believe it too, um, hit the like button. Do share this episode or any episode with your friends who are performing live. And we will see you back next week same time with special guest Mike.